Even when he talks about killing me, leave me for dead. Still. Um, okay, guys, uh, if you don't have anywhere to be, and you're not storming for the exits, please stay in your seats because we have a treat for you. Uh, getting her very own panel without her annoying arm candy uh, is the one and only much easier to stand in front of 2,000 people with a microphone for an hour and chat than walk up and down there once and try and look serious. It's too hard. It's too hard. It's fun though, right? Does anybody else want to try it? <laughs> sure. No? Oh, sure. <laughs> I might pick one person. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I'm going to pick you, but I know I'm picking you. I'm coming to get you. You didn't know this was going to be an interactive experience this afternoon. Neither did I. <laughs> do you want to do it? Now we're all awake. Yeah, you do. <laughs> What's your name? Kylie. You ready to do the catwalk? I'm just looking at the back of my hair now in the, in the mirror. Looks okay. It's not great. The humidity here is not great for my hair. Anyway, no are you way. ready to do your cat Do you want me to do it with you? Okay, you ready? Can, we see some, can somebody sing or something? Or clap? Can you clap? Finger of God. <laughs> um, how are you all doing? Are you all just trying to recover from J and J? You're like, all oh, right, all oh, right, calm down. It is quite exciting to see them both at the same time, and um, I am really glad that you stayed to chat to me. So I will. <laughs> Um, so, you're first. What's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? My name's Alexis, and I'm from Winslow, Arizona. Uh -huh. and, um, How old are you? I'm 11. You're so brave asking a question. Well done. Good girl. I'm so sorry to cry. I was supposed to be picked for uh, Jared and Jensen. Oh. <laughs> 
What did she say? So I was, I was um, going to ask the question, and I didn't. I was um. <laughs> okay, let's all out. Cry harder. Come on, get out. Cry, cry harder. Come on. Let's go. Come on, just cry. You're okay. It's just energy. You're allowed to cry. It's okay. Okay. Can you take a deep breath for me as well? Can you take a deep breath? Oh. Can you make a silly noise? Uh. <laughs> Do you have a question you can ask me instead? My question was, well, how was it like to be, um, be on the set and work with Jared and Jensen? Okay, well I'll tell you. I'll tell you something I haven't told anyone else. Is that how you imagined it? It would be fun? It's really fun. I'll tell, them that, I'll tell everybody else a bit more because it's a good question. Thank you very much for asking. So, working on set with Jared and Jensen. Oh my God. Um, so my first episode was directed by Jensen. Did you know that, Alexis? Did you know that? So, um, on set when Jensen would be directing, I swear, he's such a good director. It was the quietest the crew ever was. It was, it was really, it was, there was such calmness, because Jensen knows the, the show so well and how it all works so well. And so I work, walk onto set my first day and thank goodness I had no lines, I was so nervous. I was really nervous to meet Jared and Jensen too. And um, all I had to do was sit in my chair and drink a whiskey and the dead people were stuck in the ceiling above me. Yeah. That's all I had to do. I didn't have to stand up, so I didn't have to worry about falling over. <laughs> I just had to worry about like not dropping the glass or hitting myself in the face with the glass. And like all my years of theatre training and all my experience as a person, as an actor, came into play to just not F it up. <laughs> that day because I was so nervous and uh, so the first thing that happened was I walk on, I've got my high heels in my hand and I walk by and the first thing is Moira, who I now know very well, I hear her past remarking as I walk past, she's tiny, and so here we go, so the first thing that happens is they put a booster seat under my chair, <laughs> so I'm boosted and they get me the glass of whiskey and Jensen's there, and Jensen's standing like this with um, Serge, or DP. Jensen's standing like this. <laughs> Another redhead. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't know if he knew more than me at that point, if he knew I was going to be around or not, but what was so nice was he took the time to ask me where I was from and find out about me in between a take. Because believe it or not, even though it was only that one shot, there was like, took a couple hours, it's a few takes, um, to get the different angles, and he just made me so um, welcome. And that's how they treated all the guest stars, which is very, very rare, I think you'll we'll find in, in television. And then my first, um, my first interaction with Jared was actually in the supermarket around the corner from where I was staying. <laughs> and he was there with Genevieve, and I think it must have been Tom. Uh, or Shep, I don't know, in the, in the, in the buggy, and um, I had a cold, I think everyone had had a cold or something, and they were like, hi, and I was like, hi, stay away from me, because <laughs> I didn't want them to give them the cold, and so the week after that was 200th episode party, which we kind of thought, I thought was maybe like the last ever party they would ever have, I didn't know there'd be another 100 episodes, <laughs> and I'd be at the 300th party, I didn't know that at the time, um, and so I walked into the 200th party, didn't, you know, I've barely been there on set, barely know anyone, and um, Jared was entering a similar time, with him and Genevieve were coming in at the same time, and they were both like, how are you feeling? I was like, oh my god, like how do they, how have they remembered who I am, and that I had the cold, or maybe it was a really bad cold, and really memorable. So, um, it's always been so wonderful to work with them. They are always so professional, but at the same time, ready to have fun 
and so good at what they do that they can be relaxed. They were never horribly tense or stressed out. It was never like that. And if there was a tension building on set, one day we were running out of time and there was hot pizza. Sometimes they do a hot snack. If your hours go on for 14 hours, they bring in a hot snack, like 10 o'clock at night or 2 o'clock in the morning or whatever, the last two hours before we finish. And um, hot snack's important at that, that, time, that point. And there was pizza and it was my take. And I was like, oh, there's pizza. And the first AD was like, we've got to go, we've got to go. And Jared was like, wait, 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 wait. Ruthie, you want pizza? <laughs> Stopped. Stopped production. <laughs> and walked me over to the pizza table <laughs> and made sure I got pizza. So it was kind of like a wonderful and probably never to be totally repeated experience. When I look back in hindsight, I had a wonderful time, and then there was Misha, but that's a whole other question. <laughs> Somebody else has to ask me that question. Thank you so much for your question. Okay, good girl. Hi! Hello again. Hello again. <laughs> um, I just love to hear you both giggle at the same time. It was so cute. <laughs> um, okay, so mine's more of a request. I promised a friend. He absolutely loved the way you said Fergus in the show and wants to know if you can say it for him. If I had a dollar, <laughs> I'd have about $500. Um, so here we go. Fergus, 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 Fergus. The Winchesters, the Winchesters, the Winchesters. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. My first year or two, everyone was like, can you just say Fergus? Can you just say the Winchesters? And I was like, I never knew I was so interested. <laughs> This is amazing. I just have to say a word and people are happy. Fergus, Fergus, Fergus. Fergus, Fergus, Fergus. Anytime you ask me, I will say it. Just not in front of Mark Shepherd. <laughs> Thank you. It's been so nice to see you girls. Bye. They have the cutest voices ever. Hi. Hi. Um, my question for you is what was your favorite scene? Sorry? What was your favorite scene that you were in? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's too hard a question. What was your favorite scene? Um, mine would probably have to be when you argue with Crowley all the time. Oh, I love that. <laughs> when you were giving your son shit. <laughs> um, I remember, you know, when people ask me this question, there's like a Rolodex in my head, and I just, I have a memory of a, a moment, and I just talk about that moment. So I'm not saying it's my favorite, but it's one of my favorites, okay? Is that close enough? So there was one where I had to come in, and I was all cut up and bloody. I think I was pretending that somebody had attacked me, which is a very low, low maneuver for, for Rowena. And she comes in, and she kind of says to him, like, you know, be a bloody king. Like she can see, like he is a, a piece of him, him is her son. And there is a piece of our, was, is like, would actually be proud of him if he was actually good at what he did. And like, Ugh. do you know what I mean? And I really, I really enjoyed that day's filming. I really enjoyed saying to Mark Shepard over and over again, be a bloody king. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, it's like, it doesn't get much more fun than that, getting to swear at someone over and over again. And I'm, I can't remember if, it must have been in the script, otherwise it wouldn't have been allowed. Yeah, I didn't improvise that one, it was, it was there. The swearing was in it, that was fun. Is that okay? That'll do. Thank you so much for your request. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. How are you all doing? Been here for the first time. Wow, hands up who's been here before. That's about half and half, eh? Have the newbies, have the oldies shown the newbies <laughs> what it's all about? Good. And the newbies, will you come back? And the oldies, will you come back? Okay. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I can't get rid of me. Um, when I first did my first, one of my first ever conventions, um, there was a lady from Scotland who I, knew, and I know quite well, and she said to me, 
Welcome to the supernatural fandom. Once you're in, you kind of get to it. <laughs> and I was a little bit scared, but also thrilled. <laughs> and it's remained the same ever since. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Hi, my name is Cadence. My question is, did you like being the mother of the king of hell? I prefer being the king of hell myself. I am, um, no, I really, when I got the job, I auditioned for this part, it was called, they had changed the names in the script. I kind of guessed it was something to do with Crowley, but maybe I was his ex-wife or something. I couldn't work, quite work it out from the sides. And um, I didn't know my, you know, my, I knew my name was Rowena, but I didn't know who I was really. And when the casting director phoned my agent, she said, so actually she's going to be playing the mother of the king of hell. And when I told my friends in Scotland that, that they were like, of course you are. <laughs> of course you are. And for a long time, I was the mother of the King of Hell. And then I think I hopefully became Rowena. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, of character in her own right. Yeah. Now I'm the Queen of Hell. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think. I feel so happy, I feel so happy for Rowena. And it was about bloody time. Like, you need a woman in charge down there to can sort shit out. Honestly. Sorry, I swore. Apologies. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Um, so yes, I was really happy to be the mother of the King of Hell. But I'm glad that Rowena went on to become even more a person in her own right. If that's, okay, if that's fair to say. Do you think that's fair to say? Do you agree? Yes. Thank you. It just, it makes me think a little bit, I'm just, I'm just waffling now, I'm overtired and I, you know, I lose my, what's it called, was it your filters? You lose your filters and you're tired. When I was four years old, my mum said to me, do you know what you want to be when you grow up? And I said, a nurse. And she said, my mum being my mum was like, why do you want to, yeah, and what oh, my, 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 my nana, my grandmother was a nurse and, you know, my sister-in-law was a nurse, you know, and it's, my aunt was a sister, and, you know, so there was something about nurses being around me, but my mum being my mum said to me, why do you not want to be a doctor? And I said, because ladies are nurses and doctors are men. Because that's what I was seeing on television at the time. So I think representation really, really matters. Not to put, you know, for, for making up your mind about what you might want to be or what you can be allowed to be. And in a very small way, I think Romina being in charge, like being a woman in power. I would just, I would just love, I would just love, 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 like if there could be some, if there could be a movie or something where you could, I could just go back and sit on that polystyrene throne <laughs> and box everyone around. That would be really wonderful. It would just would be so fun to see what the writers would have come up with and um, see how see how bad a ruler she could have been. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. My name's Michelle. And Hi, Michelle. I believe the other day I asked Rob oh, dear. about <laughs> Becky. So I Becky with the hair. Well, his character are you know, with him being with Becky. So yeah, yeah Becky with the hair. How long did you and Gabriel have fun? I am so glad Rob is not here when you're asking this question. Oh dear. Um, it's so funny, Rowena really went through them because she fancied herself with Lucifer. She thought they could be like the posh and becks of hell. Do you know what I mean? And then she was fling with Gabriel in the stacks. Probably 15 minutes. Do you know? And, um, and then like, she had her eye on God as well. He was, you know, she really went through them all. Um, so, yeah, 15, 15, six, 15 minutes. I don't know. Hey, they were interrupted. The, boy, the boys came in. That was really funny to film. That was really funny to film. And um, I had one of my shoes off. It was like, it was really good fun. And it was actually one of, like, I loved that scene. I loved all of that. And you know, there's, I should ask Phil Segrisha about it. You know the whole thing before where 
um, it's just my, I'm like looking at him and seeing stuff inside my head and he's looking at me. Like we, we, there was tons of script written, we ad-libbed a lot, and there was tons of footage, there's, you know, I've got the, the mortar and the pestle, like, and like holding the thing and like, it, we were really like, it was really funny and we did it for ages. And so Phil was going to put together like a reel of that, like a really extended version of that, and I don't know what happened. But I, that would have been, I should ask him. I don't know if he can get his hands on the footage. He's probably not allowed back in the supernatural offices that closed down. But I think that would have been really funny to see the whole extended version. But yeah, 15 minutes tops. I don't know. What do you think? Well, it seemed like 12 and a half. Maybe. Five. Well, considering that you know he did play Loki as well, I thought it probably didn't last too long. Yeah. Green? I don't know. Under 50, 15 and under. I'm going to stick with my, I'm going to stick with my, my final answer. That was the length of their relationship. It's, it's fine. Some relationships are only meant to be that long. I have no problem with that. Hi. My name is Brittany. Hi, Brittany. My question is, what was your favorite thing about being the queen of hell? Um. Yeah. And being able to Hello. control the lights. Controlling the lights. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to actually think of the real answer. And I loved it for, I, Ruth, I loved it for the character that she got there. And I actually don't think, because I was supposed to, we were supposed to film more because of lockdown and COVID and everything. And, and get to go back, but I was supposed to, and it's like, I actually don't think I had my favorite moment yet, because I just think there's so much, there's so much potential there for all the stuff that she'd be doing, and the things she'd be making people do, and how strict she would be, and, you know, she would, she would really, I, she would be the, I don't know, she, she would be a piece of work, I think, and really good as it is. I don't think I quite got to have my favorite moment. Gave them to the people um, more than me. It was a lot of fun in the anticipation of it and people talking about it, you know, people, um, you know, Comic-Con the year before, like, the writers all so excited that she was going to get to be the Queen of Hell, and so it was, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed it for a long time before I even did it, and then, unfortunately, I didn't get to do it for too long, so I'm going to say my favourite moment about being the Queen of Hell is in the future, still to come. I don't know how. Maybe just in my dreams. Maybe just in my imagination. It's been all. <laughs> Rowena, Queen of Hell. <laughs> Thanks. I'll pitch it to work on it. Hi. Hi. My name is Jenna. Um, my question is, I know like at the beginning of when Rowena came out uh, that they dressed her in a lot of those really pretty like evening gowns. I was wondering if you had a favorite one of those. Um, so, I mean, I could talk for a long, long time about the whole evening gown thing, because it, it, it wasn't, it, I never, it, it wasn't that I wanted prom gowns or evening gowns, what I wanted was um, things that were really slinky and like a bit over the top, and we talked about Stevie Nicks, and, and you know, sometimes you get a range of things they've brought in, and you, cho you choose, you, you put them on, and sometimes you, you, they might have six or seven outfits to try on you and what you, I would do is if I really liked a dress I would wear it and be like in the photograph and if I didn't like it I'd be like <laughs> and I think I was kind of signaling to the showrunners which ones I liked so probably safe to say that all the ones I wore were more my preference than not. I always go back to the red dress with the really low back. Yeah. It was really hard to wear, it was stuck to me because things dresses like that really move and there was something about that that I felt was quintessential yes. Rowena yeah, and not practical that. whatsoever <laughs> that looked great on the day. It was, and it was, I think that was John Shaw Walters episode and it was me and Terrell Rothery. Um, I really enjoyed that set and that thing I ever enjoyed, I think it's that dress. I could be wrong, but it's around about that time in that, when, when I was wearing that, where they had it in the script that 
<laughs> Rowena slaps um, Olivet. And I was like, I want to punch her in the gut. <laughs> Why is it because it's two women I'm going to slap her in the face? For God's sake. And so they like, punch her in the gut. And maybe I'm wearing the red dress then, so maybe, I don't know. I'd have to check. But yeah, so that's another favourite moment for somebody who asked earlier. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Alexander and uh, I am from Metairie, Louisiana. Woo! And my request is uh, for you to please say my name in your amazing accent. Alexander. Mm. Alexander. Alexander! <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> You're so welcome, Alexander. What a great name. What a great name. Like Alexander Calvert. One of my favorite people. Hi. Hi. How are um, you? My name is Jordan. I'm from Brookhaven, yeah. Mississippi. Oh, I love your accent. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I just wanted to say that you're happy. absolutely stunning. I mean, I, I was sitting there watching you do uh, autographs earlier, and I was looking at my husband. And she's just stunning. It's oh. the only thing I could say. And you're absolutely beautiful inside and out. What you did earlier just absolutely made my heart cry. Um, oh. But I just wanted, like, you walk with such confidence. Your character walk with such confidence. Do you, do you just naturally have that, you know, no. <laughs> Well, no. how, how can I have that, that confidence that you strive no, um, So here, here's the thing that I did ballet when I was younger, do you know? And I weirdly would get into trouble for my posture because, and I kind of have a slightly turned out nose. And so the feedback I would get from people when I was younger was, I was terrified. And I'm tiny, so I think nobody can be scared of me. Right? Um, so I like, my first day of drama college, is a theater kind of like this, and my seat was over there. And like, I'm like, this is my first day in front of all these people. My drama, like, this drama college in London, I'm so scared. And so I'm like, <laughs> like this across, and I sit down. Do you know what I mean? And I found out afterwards, like the, the people I got to know who were making my friends were like, you were so scary, you were so terrifying. And I was like, I can, I honestly was shaking like a leaf. And it's like a kind of a, I suppose like a self-defense mechanism that's maybe quite a useful one. And it's a bit like, I always think of it like Swan Lake where you're gonna like, I'm fine, I'm fine, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> I'm fine. And I, I do think there is an element of fake it till you make it. Um, and what I will say about my confidence is that doing this is because of how all the audiences have been with me. 10 years ago, this would have been my worst nightmare. I would have been so scared to stand here and do this. I'd be so worried about what I was gonna say. But you all, the audiences from doing these panels and these conventions, has given me the confidence to do that, and it is a muscle. So I go off stage and I worry about something I say to somebody in the green room and think, oh, I think I'm an arsehole. And I still, you know, I, I'm not super confident, but then you kind of learn, or you can kind of you learn to kind of manage. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. I think it's the accent too, your accent <laughs> Just here though. <laughs> thank you so much, thank you. That's really sweet. Um, my name is Bella. I was born in New Jersey, lived in Pensacola. Um, my question was, if you could redirect any Supernatural episode and change something about it, what would it be? Oh, hi! Just in time. Hello. That was a really good question. I've never had that question before. Can you believe that? So, the question was, because it was quite quiet, the question, can you say it again? Oh, um, if you could redirect any Supernatural episode and then change something about it, what would it be? Ooh. <laughs> this is too, too broad. It's, too, it's a broad stroke of it. We're at the end of the con. So I would go to the end of the last episode. <laughs> and Dean would be okay. And it would jump cut to Rowena and Hell. And I would get to be Rowena and Hell one more time. 
and it would be like, duh, 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 to be continued. <laughs> so I know. It's pretty good. It's <laughs> pretty good. And since he's such a bad dude that everybody doesn't like, maybe Chuck's been sent to hell. <laughs> And he's, you're like... You're learning to love hell. Yeah. I'm learning to love hell, yeah. <laughs> and I have to like get you juice and things like that. You just, you just gave me tea. Tea, yes. <laughs> Not too hot. Not too hot. <laughs> I heard too cold. Too, and I went uh, still yeah. further. Well, isn't she lovely? Yeah. They're lovely. They're lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 